Hey, don't listen to what I'm about to say. Don't follow my advice. You might really hurt or even kill yourself. I'll do a video, show you how to do some stuff. It may not be by the book, it may not be exactly right, but it's how I do it and it works for me. So hopefully it'll work for you. And that being said, here we go. And footnote to this video, this is only for checking your clutch facings and your cap and the condition of your worm shaft. Do not pull your worm shaft out by the method that I'm about to show you. Do not pull the worm shaft because bad things could happen. So this video is only to show you how to check your clutch facings, check your main drive pulley, your cap, and the condition of the splines on your worm shaft. But do not pull the worm shaft, please, please. Today, I'm gonna to do one that I've been waiting to do for a long time on the pin setter. It's a video on tearing down the gearbox clutch. It's pretty much a, you know, a bigger undertaking than you know one of the smaller jobs. Uh, one of those things, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I'm gonna go ahead and tear into it anyways. Mine's been real quiet, uh, smooth. A lot of times your gearbox clutches chatter. Whenever the machine runs, you'll hear like a chattering noise. You'll see the clutch arm fluttering that's when you, you, you know your facings are getting worn out and your shoes are getting worn out and it might be time to take it apart and put some new parts in there uh, there's splines on the worm shaft it's pretty fascinating once you pull it out to see what really runs the pin setter so i'm going to go ahead and uh, start disassembly and show you everything and hopefully we won't find anything bad but if we do i'll be glad that i took it apart and found it and then we'll get everything put back together again and maybe you'll understand a little bit more how the clutch works on the Brunswick pin setter, how to take it apart, how to put it together, how to adjust it, and hopefully I won't screw anything up. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay, this is the gearbox clutch. You see the two nuts on the back, that's on the worm shaft. You have the back shoe here, the cone as they call it. You have the main drive pulley. There's a set of facings in there that rides up against this cone back here. The cone has splines on it, on the worm shaft. I'll show you that when I get everything taken apart. But if you notice right here, on the four to one, this little cam is on its high point right now, pushing this up. Whenever it pushes this up, it pulls in on the bottom of the clutch, which forces the clutch arm to go down, which right now is up against that stop. And that's why the pin setter is not running. There's just enough of a gap. It's hard to see it in there. But there is just enough of a gap to pull the cone away from the clutch facings. So the pin setter will idle and there won't be any friction in there to run the gearbox itself. I'm going to have to pull this guy off here, this little uh, C-ring off of there. There's this at the bottom is the actual clutch adjustment. Once you get it in there, it's 7 16ths, a couple of jam nuts on there that threads into the bottom, which is connected to that, which is connected to this link. Look, that controls pulling in the bottom of that, pivots around the middle, makes the arm go up and down. Arm hits the stop, facings pull away from the clutch face, pin setter stops running. So that's how the pin setter knows how to start and stop is by that clutch arm. So let's start disassembly. First thing I'm gonna do is those two large nuts there. They're about an inch and an eighth. I'm not sure I'm gonna have to use a crescent wrench because the biggest wrench I have here at the house is one. So I'm gonna use a crescent wrench and a Ford wrench, pull those two nuts off the back and get started there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start disassembly taking the two nuts off the back. I'm going to first take the belt off the motor to the clutch and then take the other one off here for the pulley on the side. Those will just be in the way. But remember first thing always I unplugged the pin setter, turned off the breaker so there's no chance the machine can come alive at any point. Alright now we got this out of the way, see how this pulley spins freely? It's because there's just enough of a gap in here. You can't really see it, but there's just about a, maybe a 64th inch gap in between the cap 
and the back nuts here. So right now, with the clutch arm up, is keeping that out of keeping that off of there. I'm gonna go ahead and take the two nuts off here. Okay, also on reassembly, just some stuff that makes a difference. Depends on your pin setter speed. I've been talking to David H. We used to work together. He's a really good pin setter mechanic, and he's given me a few tips and stuff. I haven't done this in a while. So, and yes, I'm not proud of the fact that I only have one crescent wrench and I have this kind of makeshift wrench here. I just need something to break this nut loose. I'm not going to use it for anything more than that. Let's see here. There we go. Broke the nut loose. And get this out of the way. Now you can start seeing there's bigger gap here between the back. So it shows you the so spline fitting between that cap and the worm shaft is pretty, pretty ingenious idea. AMF was more of a mechanical pin or a electrical pin setter. It wasn't very mechanical, whereas you know it's more like a Prius, I guess, by today's standards. Whereas a Brunswick A and A2 was more like a '57 Chevy, all mechanical, all solid parts. It'll never wear out. It's a testament to Brunswick and their developers back then. I almost got the second nut off of here. Alright, second nut's off. Now I'll show you this cap. Just slides right out the back here. You got a special fitting right here. There's a brass fitting on the back of the clutch plate that that fits into but you look at the facings here the facings are good still got a pretty thick face on that thing so this is an actually quality bowling corporation so somebody's overhauled this gearbox at one point didn't look like they'd done it too long ago but even though the pin setter has been sitting for 40 years in the church till it came here the splines on this thing look really good go ahead and pull the the drive pulley off of here Maybe. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pull the drive pulley off. Man, this looks really nice. So evidently, when these things went in at the church 40 years ago, somebody must have just done a complete gearbox overhaul on this thing because this thing looks nice. The bearing's nice and tight and smooth. Facings, if you look, you got a lot of space between the rivet and those clutch facings. But what it does is it sandwiches between the gearbox, drive pulley this and this whenever you engage the clutch and it comes off of there just like a car alright next I'm going to go ahead and engage the clutch here go ahead and put that down see it's pulled away from the housing there I'm going to go ahead and take this arm off here there's a roll pin or a c-clip up here on the top to pull that out and the bottom there's a 7 16 bolt and a couple of jam nuts on the bottom adjustment got to take that out take this out and then this whole unit will slide completely off you'll have nothing but the worm shaft left in there Okay, I got the C ring off of there. There's a washer on the side. Then this piece should be able to push all the way through out the other side over here. Okay, for that clutch arm adjustment on the bottom, this is the spacer that goes on the back, and then you put the nut behind that and tighten that down to keep it from turning. But don't forget, 
So on the back side of this, I've got it already in, see it's sticking out the back pretty far there. Maybe hard to see, but it's sticking out a ways. Then I put that jam nut and spacer back here on the back side of that. Jam nut off the back, the very end. It's a 7 16 wrench. There's a jam nut. There's also this spacer that goes in between. So you want to make sure you don't lose that when you pull this apart. All right, we got this off, leaving this on here. This doesn't come off. We'll come back up top, pull that shaft out. Okay, now we got the bottom part disconnected down here. This long shaft will stay in there. That's actually your clutch arm adjustment. Once you put it back on, put about a sixteenth of a gap up here between the back cap and the clutch facing. Then you adjust this down here to get your four to one to stop like where it is right now. That's a good arm. I don't think you can see it on the video, but you want that four to one to be level like it is. This is your adjustment down here in the bottom. There's also a spacer here. I can't pull that off yet. I'm going to go ahead and knock this shaft out here on the top. And that'll basically free up the whole clutch assembly to come off and lead me down to the worm shaft. difficult I see. A little better angle here. Hmm. Might be better if I pull it off the other way then. Okay, I'm going to go back the other way with it. Well, there should be a washer in this side, but there's not. May not be required on both sides. Get my punch back out of there. There we go. Alright, now I can get my punch out of here. Got my punch out. Basically, we're ready to slide the whole thing off the back here. Clutch arm. It's caught on the outer range. There we go. And pull this off the back. 
Okay, these splines are a little chewed up. I'll have to get a good shot of that here in a minute. But here's your main clutch assembly. Got that? You see the clutch shoes sticking down in there? I'll go ahead and clean that up before we put everything back together. I'll show you a little bit more about it. I'm looking at my worm shaft here. It's got some pretty good wear on here, so that's something we're gonna have to definitely keep an eye on for later on. I'll show you a little closer on that, what it looks like. Okay, here's the clutch itself now that it's been removed. You see a little bit closer here. The actual clutch itself. You can pull this off here. You see you got clutch facings on the inside there. These look really, really good. So these must have just been replaced when this pin setter was put in the church back around 1980. You got your clutch shoes here. They're right in between that groove right there. That's what pushes that plate in and out. Here's your clutch shoe here. Very minimal wear. You can see the, the original manufacturing and then the actual wear on there. So that hasn't really worn much at all. So we're going to leave that back on here. We'll lubricate all that before I put it back together. There's your lower adjustment for the clutch arm itself. And then there's your clutch arm here that goes up and down. Basically it pivots whenever it's at the bottom and it hits that cam. Basically it basically does that with the clutch itself. It pivots around that mid spot up here. Of course this is the piece it attaches to that makes it the clutch arm go up and down depending on. Okay, before we reassemble, I'm going to do a little bit of grease on these splines. Not too heavy because you don't want to grease up your facings and have your clutch not want to work because you got too much grease on it. And just kind of a light amount of grease there. Put the spring on here. Okay, got my main clutch facings here. Now spline in. Just got to get it lined up Just right here somehow. There we go. Got the spring in there. Got the facings. Now we're going to put in, and I'm lubricating everything as I put stuff together here. Some stuff that may never come apart again and doesn't ever get any lubrication. Like I just put a little bit on the center of this brass fitting there. That slides on there. That's your main clutch drive facings. Let's see, where's my, I don't know where my hammer is, so. Come on, you. There we go, I think that's as far as it wants to go. Until I get the rest of it together here. All right, my comb, I'm putting a little bit of grease in the splines of the comb. Mary got this one hole right here that's got to line up with the line, with the pin in here. This pin's got to go in that hole or else you're going to have lots of problems. So I'm going to bring it around to line it up. Come on, you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get 
one nut on the back just to kind of hold things in place there it goes finally all right this in far enough to get it started. Now, need to line up this top portion. Get that back in. Which is the actual reset lever and such. There we go. Remember before it went underneath the outer range linkage. Make sure I get that in place. Okay. We'll probably have to come in a little bit further to get that reset lever in right. Luckily I got everything lined up right. So I'm just cranking this in now so I can get this top part to line up a little better so I can get that pin in across the top. So right now I'm having to push in on it. Okay, before we get too far ahead up top and getting that nut tightened down further, we want to go ahead and get this put in while we got some flexibility down here. This long bolt right here that is the adjustment for the clutch it needs to thread in you can see the round hole of it right there so I need to line those two guys up thread that in and then there's a spacer and a jam nut that goes on the back of this once I get a, get that put in there but you want to get this put in now because once you get the nut tightened down a lot further and this more compressed you'll have a hard time getting this in there because it'll be too far past so go ahead and put this in first Okay, I've only got that jam nut in about, the first nut about eight threads, eight or nine threads showing. That's giving me just enough to get this adjustment bolt in here. It's threaded into that housing. You see that? So I'm gonna go ahead and finish tightening this down. And as I said, I got a spacer and a jam nut to put on the back side. Uh, you'll set this later. Once you get the clutch completely assembled, you get more of a ballpark adjustment on it. And once you run the pin setter, you'll fine tune the clutch arm with this setting down here on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and finish tightening this up and we'll move back upstairs, finish putting the nuts on the back, getting our clutch facing adjustment and the uh, pin that goes in the top of the clutch assembly for the clutch arm. Okay, now it's time to assemble this top part. Line this guy up. If you can't get it in far enough, go ahead and tighten the cone on a little bit further so you can get the holes to line up. I had to take a file to the shaft a little bit because it wasn't going in very cleanly. But now notice it glow, goes right in. Very nice. Get a little lube on here. A little bit more on the end over here. As once this goes in, it's not going to be out for a while, so get a little lube there. Tap it the rest of the way in. And then go ahead and put my clip back on this end. I got a washer and a clip on that end, and then I'll progress on from there. Okay, now I got the shaft back in here. Got the washer on the end with the C clip on that end and on this end, so the shaft is in good. We're back to good mobility there, so I'm going to go ahead and finish tightening the nut on here and get my gap set. Okay, if you notice, as I'm tightening it, there's a little bit of a gap in there. And every time I tighten it, that gap's getting a little bit closer. So you want to have 
freedom for this to turn and just enough of a gap in there that when the clutch arm comes down the facings don't touch and the pin setter will idle and not run. So I'm going to finish tightening the jam nut on the back to get my appropriate gap between the plate and the clutch facings and then we'll continue from there. All right now we got everything back together got both nuts on the back here everything's tight if you notice there's about it's a little bit of a play in here you see the gap in between your facings and the cone it's about a 30 second maybe a little bit less but that's about where it was when i pulled it apart but you want to make sure you got a little bit of a gap in there at zero with the clutch resting and everything stopped you should have just a little bit of a gap in here you notice on the back there all right we're doing our first cycle well, we got the clutch very smooth and it's a really it's a little bit short get that up a little bit higher where the rod pretty much is that center point on the allen head bolt there all right i'm going to come to the bottom of the clutch here's your clutch facings come back to the back here i'm going to bring this out let's go about one full turn and see where we are now you see where we are now i brought that counterclockwise looking back to front now let's see where we are at the end of this cycle Cycle. Oh, it's almost there. It's still a little bit high, so we'll come out and try one more turn to see what happens. Okay, here we go. We did one more turn. Okay, here's the bolt that I was just turning. Got the two jam nuts here. I kind of left that where it was when I had it apart, but there's also back here is this one jam nut and spacer that we took out earlier. We need to make sure we lock that down so that it doesn't change and it'll hold that setting on the clutch. All right, here's the cycle. Here about clutch all back together. Nice and smooth. There's a little bit of chatter to it. And then we are at right down the center pretty much. Okay, for that clutch arm adjustment on the bottom, this is the spacer that goes on the back, and then you put the nut behind that and tighten that down to keep it from turning. But don't forget, it's on the back side of this. I've got it already in, see so it's sticking out the back pretty far there. Maybe hard to see, but it's sticking out of ways. Then I put that jam nut and spacer back here on the back side of that. There you have it. I hope you learned something from this. And I'll do some more videos. If you got any comments, please leave them. Thanks for watching.